Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to a brand new video. Now in today's video, I'm showing three different ways to color in projects really easily using my Simon Hurley Create Ink Pads. This is a really fun video because it walks you through lots of different techniques. Um, some are a little bit more time consuming and some are really super easy to do. And I share three different cards in the end using the Sentimental Flowers stamp set. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so for my cards today, I'm going to be using the Simon Hurley Create Sentimental Flowers stamp set. The reason why I like this set so much is because it's been so much fun to color. It's already got those lines in it to kind of create a little bit of depth and shading, but the coloring has been so fun. So for this first technique, I'm going to take a couple of the different flowers and a couple of the leaves and line them up in my Misty stamping tool. I'm leaving a little bit of space in between them because you'll see how I kind of color them, but I like this method because it's a huge time saver instead of stamping all those images out separately. So I'm going to go in here with my antiseptic powder bag, and this is going to get rid of any static or any cling when I'm putting down my embossing powder in a little bit. I'm going to use my Jetpack Archival ink and give some good pressure on all of these different images to make sure they stamp really well on my Stark White cardstock. Now once I've done that, I'm going to really quickly bring in my clear heat embossing powder and throw over a quick layer on top of all my stamping. Now Archival Jet Black ink has a little bit of an oil base to it, so if you work just fast enough, you can throw over some clear embossing powder, which is going to help kind of keep some of the watercolor in that we do later, but also just give a really nice crisp black color. I've been obsessed with doing that lately. So then I always like to stamp several of them when I have them out in my Misty like this. That way I can heat emboss it and save it for later if I want to do a little bit of coloring on the go or while I'm watching TV. This is a really helpful option. And since we've already got it here, why not save a little bit of time and do some stamping so I can get even more use out of this stamp set. Now for my first coloring method here, I'm going to go in with my Simon Hurley Create inks and do a little bit of ink blending. Now I'm using the Gina K blender brushes here because I like that these give a nice soft color. That way it's not too intense right away and I can also blend the colors in together really smooth and seamlessly. I'm going to start off with a little bit of slippery and wet in the center and fade that out and then I'm bringing in some prom queen from right outside the edges. Now you can see I'm not worried at all whether it goes outside of the lines. I'm really not taking too much time to care about that. I just want to make sure that I get a nice blend between colors and then I can always spend some extra time going in and cutting these out with all the time that I save from coloring. Now to add even a little bit more shading, I went in with the red brush and went in with a little bit of Game Over, which is a nice kind of dark maroon color, and added even a little bit more shading. Now for my leaves, I'm going in with my light green brush and blending in a little bit of Psych on these leaves. And this is the reason why I left them so far apart from each other. I didn't want to have to worry about, you know, blending the greens into the reds on accident. So I left lots of space in between each image so that I can individually blend them and not worry at all. And then I'll bring in a little bit of Tropical Tango and add some shading onto those leaves as well. And if you need, you can totally use the edge or corner of your blender brush to get into those smaller areas. Now I just love how this effect turned out. Those beautiful blends that we got are so seamless and it was super simple to do to get that bold, vibrant color in the end. So then I'm going to cut those out and then to finish off the card, I'm gonna do a little bit of stenciling for my background. So I'm using the stained glass stencil from Simon Hurley Create and I just love all the detail in this stencil. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a tone on tone effect on this craft card stock. One thing I like to do is kind of create lines or things like that on the one layer. And to do this, I'm just going to take pieces of purple tape or masking tape and tape off both of the edges so I just get kind of a stripe of the design down the center of the card. Now I'm going in with the brown blender brush and I'm going to use the Gur Simon Hurley Create ink. Now this color can be a lot darker and more vibrant than it usually is, but that's why I like this blender brush because it really gives a nice soft color. And you can also see I'm tapping off some of the excess color on my craft sheet just to make sure that I'm not going in with too harsh of a dark color. And to check here, I'm just lifting it up by two of the tape corner edges and if I need to, I can place it back down and add a little bit more color, which is what I wanted here. So once I'm done with that, I'll peel off my stencil for that final reveal, and I love that nice tone-on-tone -tone subtle effect in the background. Now to finish this off, I'm using the sentiment Sending Hugs from that same Sentimental Flower stamp set, the one we've been using for the whole video, and I'm going to stamp that down in some Jet Black Archival ink right down the center of that design that we made. And I love to do my sentiments in the Misty recently, especially if I've already done something on it like this background. That way if I need to, if I've misstamped, I can always go back and stamp it again right in the exact same spot. 
Now for adhering flowers down, I like to do the flowers themselves on a little bit of foam tape for some dimension on my card since I want them to stand out. And then with the leaves, I'll kind of find the placement that's perfect for the leaves. And then I'll add a little bit of tape runner adhesive onto the back and kind of hover it over the area where I want to place it and then press it down with my finger to stick it in place. I find that's a lot less messy and I've had some great luck with that. So here's a closer look at the card. I just love how quick and easy it was to blend those out and the smooth, seamless, bold colors that you get are just stunning. For this next card, I wanted to create a cluster and bouquet of flowers without having to cut them out and layer everything up since I know a lot of you guys don't love to do fussy cutting. So for this one, I'm choosing the flowers that I want to use as well as a couple different leaves and just laying them out onto my Misty stamping tool. And I actually like to leave a little bit of space in between each one. I find it creates a really cool look when I'm coloring it in and I don't mind that not everything's tucked underneath the flowers. So I'll stamp that down with some Jet Black Archival ink, give it good pressure all over to make sure everything transfers and once I have that completed, once again, I'm going to take a little bit of clear embossing powder and sprinkle it over top of my stamping. The clear embossing kind of acts as a little canal to keep all of your water and color inside so that it doesn't bleed outside your image, which is super helpful. Now here I'm going to add my Simon Hurley Create inks down onto my craft sheet. I'm using Slippery and Wet, Clear Skies, Triple Berry, Psych, and Tropical Tango. Then I'll spray some water down onto my surface and start my water coloring. I like to use a regular paintbrush. Uh, this is just a Ranger Artist brush, um, but I like to use it because I find that I have a little bit more control. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of clean water and start flooding the flower first. And then once I'm ready, I can add down my color. So in the center of the flower, I'll add a little bit of slippery and wet down. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of clear skies and start painting that right in the center of the flower petals. Now the reason why I added the water at the beginning of the image is because it's going to help blend these two colors together. So when I add that blue down, the water is going to help kind of mix it rather than just sinking into the surface. This gives it a little bit more playtime for them to move and blend together and gives a really beautiful look. So if you struggle with blending, adding water down on first is a total game changer. Finally, I'm going to use a little bit of triple berry right in the top edge of the petal and add that down onto the card as well. And if you find that you need a little bit more water by now since we're at the edge and it might have dried up, you can totally go in with a little bit of extra water as you're bringing this color in so that it blends in really nicely with the clear skies color. I've had a couple comments saying that they thought these colors were going to be weird at first and they ended up loving the color result once it's all finished. So totally look into your stash and play with different colors that you might not usually think of because you can come up with some really cool blends like this one. So once I'm finished with the flowers, I'm then going to go into the leaves and do the exact same thing. First I added down a little bit of water, then I'll bring in Psych and Tropical Tango to do a little bit of blending. If I didn't add the water down first, the color would kind of sink into the cardstock, so adding that down gives some nice playtime for the colors to mix together, and I love Tropical Tango and Psych for leaves. Here's a closer look, and this totally took more time, but I love how just detailed the blending can get with the watercolors once you're done. So now for this card, I know I promised no fussy cutting. This is super simple. I leave a big white border around the image and I'm just going to cut kind of around it, but leave lots of space. Like I'm not even going into any of the details. I just wanna cut off that top area of the white cardstock to make the card a little bit more interesting. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to stamp down the I Love You sentiment from that same Sentimental Flowers stamp set in Jet Black Archival ink. And what's next? You guessed it, we're going to add a layer of clear heat embossing over top to match the stamping, but also give a really nice bold black look. I just love how that stands out on the card. So now I'm going to stamp down using the Sketched Bouquet background stamp, which has some of these same flowers, but it's all clustered into a background, which makes it super easy to stamp. So then I'm going to take a prickly pair of card base from Gina K and use my clear embossing ink and give lots of pressure to transfer it. Then I'll throw over a little bit of clear embossing powder, which is going to give a really nice tone-on-tone -tone look once I heat it. So look at that. Once it melts, it gives a nice tone-on-tone -tone with whatever cardstock you're using. And again, that glossy effect, which just makes the cards stand out even more. So I add that all together, and I just love how this card looks. It might have taken a little bit more time to watercolor and do that blending, but wow, it really stands out and makes a pop on your card. 
Now let's move on to the last coloring method. I pulled out a few of my favorite colors for floral arrangements of my Simon Hurley Create inks, and I'm just going to flip them and smoosh them down onto my craft sheet. Now with each color, I like to do it around three different areas and kind of avoid each other, but put them as close as you can onto the craft sheet. So once that's complete, I pulled out my spray bottle and sprayed down these colors with water so we can start getting them to move and blend. Now I also decided to spray my stark white cardstock with water, and this is just going to allow the colors to move and blend, so this first layer doesn't sink right into the cardstock, instead it kind of blends and gives a more pastel look, which I love and you could totally leave it there, but I decided to dry between that layer and then go back in and just kind of keep dipping it into my inks. Now you'll notice when I tap it down onto my surface, it's kind of a lighter tap or like smack, rather than just setting it down and laying it into the surface. This way you get a little bit more texture and color variety in the background, which I happen to love. So now this is where the easy part comes in. You've already colored in all of your flowers, and now you just need to stamp them down onto your background that you've already created. So I'm using that same sketched bouquet background stamp, which I love. It has all those beautiful flowers already made into a cluster for you. And I'm just going to stamp that down with some Jet Black Archival ink for some really good contrast between all those colors. So I'll just lay that down onto my background stamp and give it some good pressure all around to make sure everything stamps. Once that is all done, here is the great background look you get. And I just love how simple it was to create that background and you get a different look every time. Now if you want the color to be a little bit more bold or vibrant in some areas, I went in again with Gina K's blender brushes for a nice soft effect and just added the same color that I had used below on top of it. So if I saw a little bit of pink, I went back in with the prom queen and blended that out a little bit. This is just going to add a little bit of extra color on top and make it pop without getting rid of any of the color and texture that you've already added to the background. So once I'm done adding a little bit more color, I can go in with my scissors. And again, this time I'm going to do a little bit of fussy cutting and do a similar thing like I did in the last one. This time I'm following along with a little bit more of the details and just cutting off and around some of those flowers to add a little bit more detail and contrast to my card. So I added that down to a card base and I'm just stamping down the Thinking of You sentiment in some Jet Black Archival ink. And finally, the last one, in normal Simon fashion, had a little bit of clear embossing powder to make the sentiment a little bit more shiny and stand out. So here's a closer look at that last card. The backgrounds are so fun to make and you get a totally different effect every time. So if you don't like your first one, try again, but I just love the simplicity of this card and the background. All right, so I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you never miss another card making and crafting video just like this one. If you wanna leave a comment down below, let me know which of these three cards were your favorite or which coloring method you prefer. I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you very soon for another card making and crafting video. Bye.